Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, um, so my voice is a bit, you know, cracky today because of my sore. I have a sore throat. Anyways, let's just get into this. <clears throat> so today's case study is Hoselet L. Uh, it's a German name you can pronounce it no matter how you like. And excuse my voice, please, again. Uh, so let's just get into the introduction. <clears throat> Britta Hosel is a psychologist and she discovered ancient yoga and, you know, meditation uh, in India and Thailand while she was backpacking through Asia and she was finishing her high school. So she was, uh, you know, very excited to see how MRI, uh, you know, the, the shows the functions of functional brain changes or, you know, structural uh, changes. And she wanted to say, does these changes either occur while you, you know, practice uh, with regular yoga or, you know, with meditation, does these, uh, can this change your brain structure? So she uh, is very famous as well. Uh, let's go down. So what was the psychology that was being investigated was that mindfulness Basically, it's the ability to be fully present and aware of what you're doing in the moment. And uh, so there are these three uh, or four words that I'm going to tell you the meaning of, which I will continuously be talking about throughout the case study. You need to understand them very properly. Um, so localization of uh, functions is basically the idea that specific areas of our brain are responsible for specific functions. Like hippocampus is responsible for memory uh, and it's also for emotion regulation as well. And insula is for self-awareness. Um, so WBM, which is voxel-based morphometry, is basically a neuroimaging technique that uses structural magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, uh, scans to measure differences in brain tissue. Uh, brain tissue, for example, here we're going to talk about gray matter. Um, it also, voxel-based morphometry also sees, you know, the changes, the structural changes, even the microscopic ones, um, which uh, means, you know, the structural plasticity. MBSR is going to be continuously talked throughout this case study, which is mindfulness-based stress reduction. It's a meditation therapy that can help with stress and it's an eight week long period, so it involves weekly classes and daily mindfulness exercises. This is basically um, a, a morphometry you can see over here. It basically is showing that, you know, how we, how we are segmenting the extractions, we are smoothing it for the validity uh, and you can see it actually, you know, monitors changes in specific brain areas and structures over time. And you can see the gray matter uh, and the white matter. And this is why uh, voxel-based morphometry is used because it just clears the picture of our brain structures. Um, so the background of MBSR is that it was developed by uh, Jean Kabat-Zinn. Uh, he was uh, he was not Buddhist, but he took the Buddhist part of meditation and, and the scientific based meditation, and so he removed the religious part out of this. It was an eight week program, and it had three techniques. For example, body scanning, meaning the sensation, being aware of you know your area of the body, and uh, the you know, mindful yoga, it basically means that stretching and, you know, slow movements, breathing and sitting meditations basically, you know, means that being aware of your you know, sensations and the sensory information like sight, smell, touch and breathing. Um, so this is what it is. So this was the FFMQ questionnaire. It's a questionnaire that you will, uh, you can find it. I will link it below in the description. Uh, you can remember one or two. Basically, it's a five. Uh, you, know, you can see one to five over here. So you have to choose one of them. Going down here. So the aim of the study was to see whether the regular participation in the MBSR leads to measurable neurological changes. Why either your brain structure changes when you regularly do these exercises. And the second was that they wanted to identify brain structures that changed, um, you know, with the result of an eight-week MBSR program. 
So the methodology was an experiment which, where they wanted to see the causal relationship between the MSR and gray matter. So GM, I'm going to continuously be talking about GM concentration means gray matter. It's a tissue in our brain. And they wanted to see whether it increases with the MBSR regularity. Um, there was also a correlation, not an experiment over here, where they wanted to see the non-causal relationship between time spent on the mindful exercises and an increase in, uh, you know, uh, gray matter concentration. What does that mean? It means that time spent, in later in the study, we'll find that time spent, no matter how you, if you spend the time in a day, like 45 minutes, and the next day you do not do the exercise, that it does not make any changes into gray matter. It depends on the regularity and not the time spent. It was also, uh, some procedures were done in the control setting, like the MRI scans, and then there was naturalistic environment for them as well, where they had to do the MBSR exercises at home uh, while walking, while sitting. It was up to them. <clears throat> so the design was longitudinal design. It was eight week long. So there were two sets of data. One was collected before and one was collected after the MBSR. Uh, so the independent major design was that there were two groups. One group was the control group where they were there was no MBSR and then there was an experimental group where they were given the MBSR therapy and both had stress. Um, so there were two variable independent uh, variables, whether the participants received the MBSR or not, whether the data was collected at the beginning or at the end. There were three uh, dependent measures, uh, measured uh, variables, which was the gray matter, concentration specific brain uh, structures like insula using BBM. And then there was this questionnaire that they had to fill. It's a self-report. It had 39 statements. They had to wait from one to five. Um, there and, and the time spent, which was recorded in a diary. So the sample was an opportunity sample. They were um, basically recruited from a center of mindfulness in New England, USA. And the, and the participants were whether uh, either uh, you know they were recommended by a physician or they were self referred due to stress. There were 33 right-handed healthy adults. Um, how do we know they are healthy? They were self-reported medical information that said that either they are psychologically or physically perfect. So they were perfect in that. They were 25 to 55 years old. Um, they were consented. You know, they knew what was going to happen, and they also did their homework. So, Everything was fine with the consent. The course fee was reducted, and also all of these participants did not have, you know, um, the experience of meditation, so they did not knew anything about it, or they didn't have any experience of that. So there were ten males and uh, uh, six males and ten females in an experimental group, and there was eleven males and six females in a control group. Going down. So procedure was that before MBSR session, so MRI scans were done two weeks prior to giving them the therapy. Um, the, the 3D models were created by using 128 sectoral slices, uh, and they combined it through you know computer software to see the changes occurring. Um, they analyzed them with BBM to measure gray matter, and FFMQ questionnaire was also completed before the therapy sessions. Uh, during the therapy session that took place in the University of Massachusetts in medical school, uh, they were also given a 45 minutes recording, uh, audio recording of the guided mindfulness exercises, which had yoga meditation, and it was given for them so they could practice it at home. There was also, um, after uh, uh, two weeks later, there were also MRI scans done again. In these MRI scans, um, you know, they had two scans that compared VBM computer software um, and measuring the gray matter. Um, first, the, 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 you know, the, the scan they took before, the prior to the um, MBSR sessions, and then the scans that they took two weeks later, the uh, MBSR sessions. And so they were also seeing the differences in FMQ scores were also cal uh, calculated. So the results were that uh, the amount of mindfulness practice was 27 minutes per day. Most of the time, was, uh, you can see over here in this chart, they spent 699 minutes on body scanning means this was the most done exercise. 
Um, you can see the rest, 22.6 hours with the uh, you know, overall time spent by all the participants. And this was the improvement in mindfulness in the uh, this was the FFMQ questionnaire totaling. So you can see that experimental group actually did a you know, significant improvement they showed in the observing, acting with awareness, non-judging. And you can see that they did not improve in the describing and non-reactivity. But control group, um, uh, significant. When you are comparing it with the control group, you can see experimental group did great. Uh, so the gray matter or matter changes. You can see that experimental groups showed increase in gray matter concentration in their life hippocampus, posterior cingulate cortex, but in the control group, there was seen a decrease in the gray matter in posterior cingulate cortex. Um, and also, you can see there were no prior differences. So as I said, there were two scans done before and after the MBSR, but there were no prior differences. But when the gray matter increased or decreased, it was due to the MBSR. Uh, so no gray matter concentration difference in insula. Again, uh, there was no causal relationship between time spent mindfulness and an increase in GM matter um, concentration, uh, gray matter concentration. Um, so this suggests that time is less important than regularity. So doing this eight week program showed that it could increase the gray matter. Uh, but if it were of only two to three days, you couldn't see any significant change in the gray matter. Moving forward, um, so the conclusion was that um, Hosella, she found that a regular mindful practice can lead to structural changes in key brain areas. And these changes are crucial for memory, for emotion, emotion regulation, and for learning. Uh, what were the ethical issues? Um, there were no ethical issues because uh, the persons were protected from the harm. Um, for example, their physical harm as well. They were told to not, um, you know, if they had any metallic implants like dental fillings, uh, braces, or anything metallic. So they were not uh, sent into the MRI as MRI has magnets in them. And so two participants also you know, withdrew uh, because they felt discomfort. Maybe uh, participants had claustrophobia, you know, the fear of being close places, so they become distressed. So they didn't take part. Uh, so the control group was waitlisted. Um, so they received the MBSR after the study. So it just shows that how much respect there is for the well being of the participants. And then there was a methodological issues. Um, so the, they lack standardization. Um, the participant, they chose when they wanted to do the exercise and how long they wanted to do. And it could be the difference in the places that they are doing. Uh, it could be the participant is uh, doing his exercises in a office and an office is loud, or the other participant might be doing it in a, you know, a garden or a quiet place in a balcony, or it could be day and night factor. So a procedure is not replicable because um, everyone is doing whatever they and however they like. So the differences in gray matter cannot be reliable. Um, so there was in, uh, internal in, uh, consistency in the question because FFMQ is highly reliable. Um, it had eight questions which were measuring acting with awareness and they had strong correlation between the answers of these eight questions. It just shows how reliably assessed the whole questionnaire was. So the validity is the experiment method, for example, the independent measure design was used. It helped measure changes in gray matter to those who took part in the experimental group and those who did not take part in the MBSR, group, uh, in the control group. So any difference was put down to the MBSR. Uh, use of control groups, you know, it increases the validity, strengthening the conclusion that MBSR is the cause uh, that increased the gray matter. Um, so they, there was a lack of control uh, on, you know, the confounding variables, for example, confounding variables like, you know, the social aspects, like the friends, you make new friends at the center, it could be the reason your gray matter is increasing. So you don't know which factor is actually affecting it, um, the gray matter increasing. So it just affects the validity overall. And the self-report data, uh, it, it had 39 items, FMMQ questionnaire. So it had 39 items, it was long, and um, parts of them might not think carefully while they were answering. And it could be that they were answering in a similar way to previous questions like response set. 
it's called a response set when you answer similar ways to the previous questions. A lagged correlation between, um, so the lack in correlation between FFMQ and grain matter concentration, it could be called in the question because you don't know what factor is affecting it. Uh, it, the data was objective because they measured gray matter concentration using BBM, which is an, and they ana analyzed it through a computer software. So this makes findings more objective. There was no personal interpretation of the researcher on the gray matter concentration. So generalization um, was the weakness here because there were only 33 participants, all had certain characteristics because it was an opportunity sample. Um, all the participants were between 25 to 55, and they all had an average of 17.5 years of education. And also we know that uh, uh, structural plasticity is known to be affected by the factors such as age and educational background. So it just makes it hard because you cannot generalize these findings uh, and be confident in it because um, not everyone might be able to, you know, have a complete um, formal education, and so it cannot be generalized to that population. Um, next is, uh, there was a strength, which is that university researchers, they encouraged their participant and experimental group that they have to incorporate these activities, these exercises uh, into their, you know, daily life. Uh, they give audio recorded tapes. It just shows that they really cared. And so there was nature versus nurture debate here. So the study supports the role of nature because um, of how you know the brain works and how the development of new synapses are, and it's all controlled by the genes. And so the study also you know supports the role of nurture because the finding demonstrate that ex uh, experiences such as attending a regular mindful class it influences our biology, you know, increasing the gray matter. Um, and so this means that with regular mindful practices, even people who have genetic predisposition to stress can experience measurable improvements. Um, so application could be that this could be applied into offices, that, like you know, employers can tell their employees to practice this for five minutes because this can increase the workplace productivity as well and decrease the sick days at um, you know at the office through stress. Now. I'm going to uh, put these questions over here so you can pause the video and do it yourself. These questions are important and the way of solving it is very easy if you understood everything. If you did not understand any question, you can go back to the video and see the answers for yourself. Everything is over there. Um, pause the video and see for yourself. Uh, I will meet you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.